In today's video, we're going to cover what a top weight does, the benefits of what the actual top weight it does to the balance of the bow, and a couple of drawbacks as well. So I've had a few questions in regards to the top weight, specifically when I talked about stabilizers, some people asked questions in that video about what a top weight does and why do Olympic style recurve archers like to use a top weight up here in the upper limb pocket area. You're watching the Jake Minty YouTube channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Jay Kaminsky. I'm a two-time Olympic silver medalist in the sport of archery. I'm trying to produce a lot of content to help make you a better archer. So if you haven't yet, hit that subscription button and the notification bell. That way you're notified every time a new video is uploaded. I'm working on producing a lot of content and I'm trying to help make you a better archer. All right, so a lot of Olympic style recurve archers will use a top weight. I used to use one in the beginning of my career because basically I was told I needed to. Uh, first, let's talk about what a top weight is and then we'll talk about why people choose them. Now, a top weight is pretty simple. It's just a weight that's generally mounted on the outside of a damper, a rubber damper, or a doinker, something along those lines. And then it, it is mounted on something around like a one to three inch uh, long extension, basically and that moves the weight further away from the riser. Now, uh, this is pretty much traditional as far as what the configuration would look like. It's maybe a little long. I personally don't even have one anymore uh, for a couple reasons. We'll get into that in a second. Um, so I kind of just threw this together as an example of for you can so you can see what it looks like. This is an old three inch extension that I used to use, some random doinker that I had laying around and some weights that I threw on it. So essentially you get the idea of what this looks like. If you look at any videos or pictures of top level archers, you'll see a lot of them using it. Why people use top weights is pretty much traditional to the actual balance of the bow on what they used to like or wanted in the past. Um, that's changing a little bit today, um, you know, thanks to some of the modern stabilization theories and systems out there. But essentially, what they are looking for is an after-the-shot reaction. When you have a top weight on your bow, after the shot breaks, the bow wants to rock forward and swing like everybody sees a whole lot with a top weight on it just due to where the weight is located on the bow relative to the grip. The weight is high and in front, and it wants to pull the bow down. That's essentially the only reason that many people use a top weight is just for that forward rotation of the bow after the arrow is gone. Um, some people feel that the bow jumps straighter and, and the shot feels a bit more dynamic that way. I can say yes, that, that is somewhat true. The bow does feel like it wants to jump out of your bow a bit straighter. Um, but with the way that I set up my stabilizers and using modern stabilization techniques, I gain more benefit from this than I see from the reaction of the bow using a top weight. The main benefit of a top weight is just simply that forward rotation. That's really all it is. There's not much more to it than that. The negative drawbacks to it, in my opinion, is that this thing weighs a decent amount of weight. You know, some people will run anywhere from an ounce and a half to maybe three ounces on the outside of a rubber doinker. That itself weighs about an ounce. And then the rod will weigh anywhere from one ounce to five ounces, depending on the material it is made of. This particular one, weighs 4.8 ounces. So 4.8 ounces on the top rod, say if my bow, if I could only hold a maximum of a six pound mass weight bow, um, I have to take into consideration that 4.8 ounces is on the top rod. So that means there's 4.8 ounces that I cannot put on the stabilizers, either on the end of my V bars or on the end of my long rod. And when I'm putting 4.8 ounces on the end of a 30 inch lever arm, it is way more efficient and I use that weight to my advantage more so than putting it on the end of a three inch lever arm. A massive difference by the factor of 10. So that is a huge advantage in my opinion that you're giving up with potentially having your bow being more stable with more weights on the end of the rod as opposed to being more centrally located on the riser. I've already done a video talking about stabilization and stabilizer setup. If you haven't seen it yet, I'll put a link in the description below plus a card at the top here on how you can set stabilizers up for you and I get a bit more in depth into stabilizer theory. 
again, just a quick summary is if you watch people who um, do tightrope walking, if they had a bowling ball that was 15 pounds and they held it like this close to their body, they'd be very unstable. But what do you see tightrope walkers doing? They hold an extremely long pole, sometimes over 30 feet long, and sometimes there's weights on the end of those rods, uh, that one single rod on the ends. So what they're doing is that instead of holding a 15 pound ball, they have a rod with seven and a half pounds on either side and because it's gonna slow down his rotational movement, he'll be able to walk on that tightrope quite easily without having any sort of balance issues. So if you use that theory to its principle on recurve style archery, putting the weights on the end of a long rod is much better and helps you hold more stable than putting it directly on the riser itself. Thank you to those who have pre-ordered uh, Tuning for Performance. If you haven't picked up a copy yet, I would highly suggest it. I cover stabilization amongst a million other things from limb alignment to bear shaft uh, tuning, walk back tuning, uh, you name it, it's in this book. I really work to make a really concise and direct resource on how to set up and tune your Olympic style recurve just like I did. Um, we had a bit of a debacle with pre-orders through PayPal. Thank you to everybody for your patience on dealing with those issues. Um, my wife really thanks you. It was a bit of a headache for her to have to deal with. Um, we're still working on getting the remainders of the copies out. We've had a lot more orders than we thought we were going to have. And so we're still seeing delays uh, for incoming orders due to the uh, actual, uh, due to our publisher not getting our books to us um, when they said they are. They're, they're a little delayed due to everything going around worldwide. Completely understandable. Please bear with us. You will get copies. And anything that is bought as of right now will be signed by me and sent to you. Um, so thank you to those who have ordered. There'll be a link in the description below on where you can grab the book itself. Uh, plus I'll put a card at the top here. There'll also be a link in the description on where you can get it on Amazon in case you're an Amazon Prime member. You'll get it a bit quicker that way, although it won't be signed, as well as Lancaster Archery Supply and Quicks Archery are carrying copies now as well. So thanks to everybody for your patience. Thank you to those who have ordered uh, pre-sale copies. I hope you enjoy it. Um, if you've gotten some, comment below. Let me know what you think. If you got them on Amazon, please leave reviews. I'm working on making sure that the website has the ability to have reviews written. So if there is and you see that ability and you've read the book, please let us know what you think. Uh, we'd love to hear some of your feedback. Thanks for watching, and thank you to my Patreon supporters. If you want to become a Patreon supporter or check out books, apparel, and some seminar info, head to jkaminski.com, and uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified every time a new video is uploaded. And I appreciate you watching. Thank you again.